Good morning folks, welcome back to another Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you by JB here. Thanks to our good friends at Design Musings who originally posted this back in 2009. Awesome little effect, you get so much out of these uh, simple uh, things we're going to do right away in Illustrator. Okay, so I will save this link if you'd like to use this as a reference and uh, also to Design Musings if they'd like to post this video on their site, uh, you're welcome to. And thank you guys so much. Okay, so let's drag that photo to our desktop. And we're going to open up Illustrator. Landscape, letter size document. Uh, let's call this sticker or, yeah, sticker type effect. Adobe Illustrator. Okay, there we go. And let's file place or bring in that image from our desktop. I like to transfer anything you get online, transfer it to your desktop first. Sometimes when you transfer it directly off the uh, website onto Illustrator's artboard or into an Illustrator file, it has the tendency to not stay or not actually be there, okay? So drag it to the desktop first, then place it in. Really uh, get into the habit of that. Okay, let's type in the word sticker. Make it big. You can use your type, whoop, don't stretch it. Go to your type palette if you need to make stuff bigger, or you can zoom in up here and size up or down. I'm using the shortcut keys, command, shift, Pac-Man keys, I call them. They're the little pointy brackets on the bottom part of your keyboard next to your space bar. Command, shift, small, big. Let's center that type. Let's go find a font. All right, let's, today we'll use our friends at defont.com. Thank you guys, you guys always provide some great stuff. Um, let's go to this section here, comic, okay? They got an entire comic section. Now we wanna grab something with rounded corners, or rounded edges as well, so that's important. So you guys can look through this. And let's see one that comes up here. And what do we got? Let's keep going. Sometimes I just get caught up looking at these fonts. Uh, they look pretty cool. All right, let's see if we can go one more place. Sometimes you'll be able to find them in the sans serif. Okay, so you can do that as well. Nothing from out there. I'm in the comic. Okay, let's try this one. Shablagu. I got this out of the, sorry, this took longer than I thought. I got it out of the cartoon section. And just scroll down or search for this in the font. Shablagu. So I'm going to save that. And we're going to open up the zip file or decompress our zip file. Go to the folder. Oh, wow, they got a lot of fonts. Let's just use the first one here. That should be good. Shablai, shablaigu. Okay, now once you've installed it, you can go to your type and you bring up your type tool or go through your control palette at the top and just type in SH. 
your font should come up. There we go. I can open up the kerning just to stretch that out a little bit. There's our tracking kerning right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this a little differently than the tutorial, but it's still the same. Let's go to object, or sorry, type, create outlines. Now you've actually got an outline of your shape. Let's outline in black and white for now, or just black with no fill. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste just to show you what's happening here. Copy and paste. Okay. So now you're going to see a duplicate down here. I'm going to show you this next effect, which is under object path offset path. And make sure you hit preview. So you can see how easy that is just by what we had in our default. Um, you can go to round it and maybe make it 0.15. Now this is the, the size, the offset size is going to range varied on the size of your type on the screen. Okay. So if you've got smaller type, you'll have a smaller offset. Bigger type, bigger offset. So let's try 5.5. Five. Let's see what happens. Whoa, too big. Okay, so you guys can gauge that. See what looks best. Maybe point two. Okay, like that. Now, problem with that, and let's just move this up. So now it actually makes a duplicate. Okay, but here's the issue you have is it's all, whoops. Let's ungroup that object. Ungroup. And now you're dealing with individual shapes. Okay. Okay, now here's where you're going to fix it. You're going to select all of those shapes and you can go to your Pathfinder tool. The old school way was to click that. Now the new school way, guys, loving it. Shape Builder. Just a sweet little tool. Now if you drag right through, that creates one shape. Okay, so you guys are seeing where this is coming along. Now if you're in Smart Guides, this is going to center it back up. Now you don't have to sp split these objects apart. I'm just doing this for the demo. You can keep in one layer, or use layers. Um, you guys make the call. I'm just going to move this duplicate over here for now. And we're almost done, guys. We're going to create, we're going to turn this outside shape into a white with a no stroke. Okay. And you're going to go to effects, stylize, drop shadow. Quick preview. There you go. I'll let you guys fiddle around with that. We'll probably use less of a shadow there. And 0 0.05. You guys can manipulate that to whatever you think looks best, okay? Now, where did our other shape go? Well, it's just in front. So you're going to object, arrange, send to back. And however you guys want to do this, really, it's, it's up to you. I'm just giving you guys the basics. So there's that expanded stroke with a drop shadow. Here's the inside shape. Now this little effect they've done with a gradient, that's the last effect we're going to do today. So we're going to go to our gradient palette, okay, I'll just rip that um, palette out of the uh, control bar. And now if we create this effect here, let me just take the stroke off and just give the stroke or give the fill a gradient effect. Whoops. You can see that that only applied to the stroke. By default, it does that. So just switch those around and make your stroke nothing. Okay. So now you guys see what's happening, right? You, you kind of have this. Now that's your gradient tool and it, it affects how your gradient's going to look. There's also your gradient tool over here, which affects the direction of your gradient. So if I click, oh, that's not working here. Okay, that's weird. I don't know why that's not working. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Oh, there we go. I didn't have it selected. Okay, so you have to, yeah, you have to have that gradient selected. And that's still not working. <laughs> okay, we'll get it going. You guys will probably have the same problem, so I'm glad this happened. Let's go and make, oh, I think I know the problem here. There we go. 
I have I'm still selected on the stroke. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay guys, so be careful. Make sure you don't have the stroke selected as your gradient or else it won't work. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm dragging my gradient around and this creates this cool effect. So you could actually do this and that. Whoops. Um, and manipulate the gradient direction. Okay. Now, the problem is the gradient color doesn't work here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go into my gradient palette and I'm going to activate my swatch palette as well. Okay, so you've got the two active, so this, this one and this one. Okay. So what you can do is you can actually just dissect the look of the sticker and figure it out visually, okay? Whenever I'm building a new uh, graphic for, for a, an assignment or a job, I'm always looking visually and saying, okay, well, what's happening here, okay? So what you have is basically a, a color range going from a lighter pink to a dark pink back to a light pink. So let's try and emulate that effect in our gradient. So let's drag this pink color in. Now, if you don't have a lighter pink or you want to mix colors, take a look at this. And I'm working in CMYK because most of our stuff is designated for print. If you're not, RGB is fine. Um, but if you want to create a new color swatch or a bunch of color swatches, you can always click and drag. So let's try that. Let's drag a few over. Some have a little bit more black than others. Okay. And let's go and drag those into your um, palette, okay? So you can see what's happening already, right? You can see how the closer I have these colors together, and let's just go back here. Oops, sorry. Drag that in there. this one a little bit lighter bring this one a little bit closer so you can see how you're getting that effect now I'm gonna go back to the tutorial just to refer to what they did so you can always go back there to check the gradient numbers it looks like they've just created four um, let's go back. And they put theirs over top of each other. It's so kind of like this. Okay. Now you can move that. You can tighten this up. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. And I want you guys to experiment with that to kind of create that, that cool effect there. And I'm also going to move back here. Just drag that in. When you drag it in, and I'll get rid of the original, you have something like that. Okay, there you go, guys. Great little tutorial. If you guys want to enhance the way that gradient looks, please take some time to do that. I won't bore you guys with this video doing that. Um, great work out there. Keep plugging away in Illustrator. Try new things. Try different tools. Have a great day.